No! No! You see this right here? This is my broken Gates carbon belt drive. And it broke on my trip in New Mexico when I was riding the GM, GM, GDMBR. There are very good reasons for why it broke. So I brought in Dave from Priority to talk about what happened and how to make sure this doesn't happen again in the future. I hope you find this educational. I wanted to do the talk over Zoom, but for some reason, Dave's a Microsoft Teams guy. We really had to think creatively. Teams allowed us to come up with great ideas together and put better product out there for our customers. Dave, my man, how you doing, brother? Ryan, so good to see you, my friend. Let's get right to the point. I broke my belt. See this thing? It's broken. It's the what, last what thing we want to see. <laughs> I don't like it. I know, man, and uh, I know it's pretty rare and the circumstances that I were, was in were, were pretty rare, but what did I do wrong? We've kind of talked about it. Well, it, it, it's more than pretty rare. I mean, I, I think I can count on one hand how many times I've seen something like that. Um, I'm going to ask you some questions. Is that all right? Yeah, yeah. Let's do that. Yeah. Tell me about, um, I, and I've looked at the photos and, and thank you, and I've obviously been following the journey. Tell me about uh, when it happened, when the break happened. What were you doing? The brake happened when I was riding up a steep single track. So all of my weight cranking on the bike really hard and it just pop and it was broken. Oh, no! That's when the belt failed. But my belief is from looking at the, the way the belt actually tore yeah. uh, that what caused it happened earlier. So I want to rewind. Okay. Let's talk about all that mud. Uh, yeah. One of your best two days on a bike? Yeah, exactly, man. Yeah, that was such a fun day. <laughs> After pushing through snow, then I got to the mud. Yeah, um, and, and you know, even before we talk about what happened to the belt in the mud, I do think it's worth talking about if you were on a chain and derailleur. Yeah. How do you think that would have held up? I think a traditional bike with a traditional drivetrain would have completely locked up in that situation. I mean, I can't say for sure, but I've had a lot of regular bikes, let's call them, and mud is a showstopper. And luckily, with you know this situation, it's one of the reasons why I love the pinion and gate setup is that it, it can handle some extreme environments like that. And so it worked, but it's still, it still, it, it got a little cranky. Yeah, uh, you know, and in my experience, uh, having been in mud like that, you would have had derailleur, derailleur hanger, cassette. You would have had other issues there as well. And I, I don't know if you would have made it as far as you did. Uh, that said, it's it's very uh, disturbing to break a belt on a bike that's this new. And especially, I mean, you know, you've had bikes with, with thousands of miles where you haven't broken a belt. So uh a couple things so before you left i know you changed your tires you did a couple things you went with wider tires um you removed your wheel put it back in a few times what was your belt tension before you left i'll be honest man i have no idea what the tension was i mean it worked it felt great but as far as like calculating the actual tension i, I don't know cool did you ever strum it even to feel if it was tight or loose not really, no. And so I think this is like, I get so comfortable with these bikes. It's like, they always just work. I've had them for years. I've never really had to mess with the tension of the belt. So I'm like, oh, it's it's fine. Let's go. Yeah, so totally fair. Um, the first thing you want to do before you embark on a multi-day off-road adventure like this, oh, not the first thing, but one of the things you want to do is yeah. certainly check your belt tension. And Gates has a free app for iPhone and Android, they work really, really well. And you can check what the tension is. Now on your bike, it should have been around 50 Hertz uh, before you left. And you know, once you get the feel for that, you'll have the feel for it. Even just going down and plucking the belt. Here comes the sun, doo -doo, doo doo You see this bouncing up and down? This is the Gates app that shows you what your tension is set at. It's super easy to use. When you download it, it gives you instructions on exactly what to do all right so you've got your phone with the app open 
you point the phone's microphone pretty close to the belt so it gets an accurate reading, and then you just strum that belt like a guitar. 59 on that one. And then we're gonna move the crank a quarter of a turn and take another reading. You're gonna wanna do this three or four times and make sure that the numbers all kind of match up. Let's do it again. All right, that was 61. Let's do it one more time. A little turn of the cranks. 59, and then it gives you the average reading. So 59, Dave said to keep my belt around 50, so my belt is tensioned a little high. I saw in some of your video when you were rinsing off the belt, I saw the deflection on it, and to me it looked pretty low. So I don't know what your belt tension was before you got into the mud, but I have a feeling it was under 50 hertz. Uh, that said, that's where I would start on any adventure on a pinion bike is at 50 hertz. Now, you're riding along, you're in the mud. Uh, the gate CDX system with center track has really good mud shedding abilities. However, the tighter the tension gets, the better those capabilities get. And so even increasing your tension when you're in a, a bad scenario for a short period of time can be a really good idea because that will increase the mud shedding ability of the system. I'm gonna jump in here again to show you how to tension your belt. It is very easy. All you need is a four and a three millimeter Allen wrench. All right, you take your four millimeter Allen wrench and you loosen up these slider bolts right here. You don't take them all the way out, you just loosen them up and then you take your three millimeter Allen key and you work on this bolt right here. And if you tighten it, it's gonna move everything back this way, which will increase tension on the belt. If you need to take away tension, you back this off a little bit and that will loosen the belt. And you're gonna wanna measure this with that phone app. The bolt back here, also four millimeters, is just to keep these slider bolts in place. Once you get it all set, Make sure to tighten these down a lot. This is very important. You don't want these to be loose. Did your belt ever pop off? Oh yeah, it popped off probably three or four times. And that was a first for me. I kind of panicked. Because yeah. I had a long day already. There was thunder overhead and then my belt popped off. And I was like, oh crap, I don't really know how to get this back on. I've never done it. Like in all the years of having these bikes, <laughs> it never happened. <laughs> now, uh, Here's the big question I have. The big question that's going to tell me, uh, at least confirm what I think happened. Uh, when your belt came off, you could either A, put it on the way you'd put on a chain, where you start at the top and then you turn the pedals and, and, and the belt rolls on, or you could B, remove your rear wheel, placed it on the front, placed it on the rear, and pop the rear wheel back in. Which path did you choose? <laughs> I took the path of what I thought was least resistance. And so I was just in panic mode. And I was like, God, I got to get this belt back on the bike. I need to move. I need to get out of the storm. And so I was like rolling it on to the cogs. And it, it was it was hard. It was very hard to do. But I yeah. slowly like kind of jimmied on there. And I knew that it was like stressing it out. But I'm like, it's okay. It's a Gates carbon drive. They're bomb proof. Yeah. Uh, and And with the right precautions they are very much bomb proof very very much i'm going to share something with you here on my screen let's see if i can do this so i want to show you something uh and, and i'm sure you've you've read this thoroughly as you have the priority <laughs> owner's manual right yeah absolutely <laughs> okay cool so um let's go over to uh before the table of contents okay Page four, before the table of contents here, <laughs> we've got the handling of the belt. And do you see down there in the bottom left-hand corner, yeah. do not roll on? Yeah. 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 So, Whoops. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's even before the table of contents, right? Uh, <laughs> Are you like so, subtly making fun of me, Dave? Uh, no, no, not at all. Not at all. But I do think it's really important to know what happens. So your belt let's talk about what happened before it broke and what happened when you were in the mud so part of the magic of the gates carbon drive is you have these carbon tensile cords in the belt and I'm, it, it's about a dozen of them think about these yeah these strings right and so you've got all these strings in there 
the tensile cords made out of carbon that make the belt strong so that it has this great tensile strength in a pulling strength, but it doesn't have side to side strength and it's not designed to. So when your belt came off the bike, what you should have done at that point is number one, never ever roll it on. But number two, uh, you know, and hopefully we had understood the belt tension before you went into this, but the moment it rolled off and you're in mud, greater tension sheds mud better. And so w- what I would have done is, first off, I would have removed my rear wheel to put the, the belt on, not rolled it on. And then I would have increased the belt tension. Going to even 70 hertz for that day would have made sure that it shed mud better and that it didn't roll off again. So if you'd done that the first time, uh, and it's super easy, you need a four millimeter Allen wrench to loosen your sliders. I'm sorry, a five millimeter Allen wrench to loosen your sliders and a four millimeter Allen wrench to add tension. If you'd done that the first time it came off and not rolled it on, you wouldn't have had this problem. And so what happened is, is as it kept falling off and as you kept rolling it on, those carbon cords, and and again, think of them as these these, uh, straight cords, several got damaged on the outside. And that's why when you look at the brake, you see it almost stepped. You see it in different places because you have those dozen cords. And as you uh, damaged several of them, you're now operating on less cords. And so days later, when you were putting in all that torque, because you're, you're a decently strong human, and, uh, and you have a little bit of gear on your bike, and you're going up a single track, you're putting a lot of torque in, you weren't operating on those, call it dozen cords. You might have been operating on half those cords. And so the belt just didn't have its original strength anymore. No! And that's why we see that stepped or jagged break that you have there. Um, it shows us that some of the outside cords were damaged from the roll on. So then your belt broke. Yeah. And that's a horrible experience and certainly the experience that no one at Priority ever wants you to have, and, and I think it's safe to say nobody at Gates either, um, and, and not an experience that any of us are used to. Uh, but then you put on your spare and you continue the ride, right? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I, did, and I, I, I know we always ship you with a spare belt ride uh, because, you know, multi-day off-road adventures, you know, uh, yeah. I got a little cocky, you know, because I've never broken a belt. I had a spare belt the entire summer last year on the divide. It never even came close to needing it. And I was like, I was looking at this and I was like, 700 miles, no problem. One belt should be fine. Yeah, so it it should be. And you're right. Um, It absolutely should be. Had you not encountered the mud, it would have been fine. Had you, uh, and again, it's not your fault, but had you on first time uh, had you tensioned it before you left home and then the first time it came off, retensioned it and reinstalled it the proper way, I firmly believe the break wouldn't have happened. Yeah, having a spare is a good idea. Uh, yep. Will you show your viewers, and I know you've seen this, how to roll, uh, how to coil a belt? Yeah, so here's a, here's my, my new spare belt, Dave. <laughs> okay, and that's a coiled spare belt, so it's really easy to uh, coil it and then yeah. uncoil it. And I know uh, just slightly like walk it out, right? Yeah, that's it. That's exactly how you do it. Don't pull, but slightly walk it out. And can you coil it? Let's see it. Yeah, Let's coil. see the magic. Do the magic trick right there. There you go. And yeah. it's really important that you do it the way that that you're showing, uh, yeah. so that again those tensile cords do not get damaged. If you damage the cords. Again, you got you got about a dozen of them. The more you damage, the weaker your belt is. So what you're doing there, that's yeah. a very simple, easy, lightweight way to carry a spare belt. Yeah. And, uh, you know, any of these things would have, I think, allowed you to continue that last uh, grueling day. But yeah. uh, I'm really sorry it happened to you. It's not definitely not the experience that any of us want. You know, in that thick mud, you wouldn't have been out there with your phone trying to figure out how many hertz you have. I, I, you know, what I would have done is I would have cranked down and gave it a lot more tension. Over a period of weeks, if you had a lot of tension on your gearbox, on your hub, that would cause trouble. But for a day or two, increasing the tension, uh, you know, a, a turn or two on those uh, tension knobs, 
that wouldn't have done any damage and, and would have, uh, again, prevented mud from sticking and would have uh, helped keep the belt on. So yeah. some right. lessons learned for next time. I mean, hopefully, uh, hopefully there isn't a next time in terms of that mud because yeah. that just looked horrible. Nothing about today has been easy. One of the things I love about watching your videos is even when the situation gets really tough, your glass is always very half full. And it's something that I really appreciate you about you as a human and watching your struggle uh, on those two days uh, just makes me continue to appreciate you and the journeys you take. Uh, I, I loved watching it. And, uh, and thanks for sharing your attitude and perspective. You know, always too, whether you have a priority or not, you can always uh, hit up our, our hotline. Uh, you know, it's info at prioritybicycles.com. You can text uh, WhatsApp us or call us at 917-819-1665. It's 365 days a year. So if people have questions uh, about anything with their bike before they go on a multi-day adventure, let us know. We're here to help. Right on, man. You guys are awesome. Look at this sad, sad belt. Ooh, how bummer. What a bummer. I really wish I didn't have to learn my lesson the very hard way, but I can only hope that my mistake will help you prevent a similar fate. Thank you so much for watching this video. Check out my channel for all sorts of other fun adventure videos. Please like and subscribe, and we will see you down the road with a new belt. And it's, this thing is never breaking again. It's not happening again.